Increasingly important in the world of football transfers is merchandising and marketing. Yes, football clubs go to lengths to predict the impact a new player might have on their team, but a considerable driver for a successful transfer in modern football is off the pitch. And a critical component of this is shirt sales. Because of course, when a big money signing joins a new club, fans flock to buy their shirt, especially if it's an iconic number and especially if the player is an established superstar. But are shirt sales really that important? How much do football clubs actually make from shirt sales? And as is so often suggested, do footballers ever actually pay for themselves in shirt sales alone? The football clubs make money from shirt sales in two ways. A fixed upfront payment received from the manufacturer as licensing rights at the start of each year of the deal and a variable commission on each sale once a certain minimum threshold number of shirts are sold. The variable commission is quite small and varies from about 7.5% to around 15% of the shirt retail price. And it's usually triggered once a fairly high threshold number of shirts are sold. This is upwards of a million shirts in most cases. Now that means that effectively kit manufacturers retain between 80 and 90% of the total retail value. The fixed upfront payment is usually sizable but leaves clubs with an aggregate of about 20% of the total sale value even in the best case scenario. So as an example, Barcelona made about 30 million euros on the sale of Lionel Messi shirts annually while the total sale value of those shirts exceeded 200 million euros. For Manchester United to recoup the transfer fee on Paul Pogba of 89 million euros, they would need to have sold 1 million shirts to start earning the variable commission and a further 8.9 million shirts as part of their agreement with the manufacturer. Now, United did sell an impressive average of 1.85 million shirts totally each season between 2014 and 2019, but nowhere near the volume of Pogba shirts needed to recoup that transfer fee. As such, the notion that a club can recoup transfer fees through shirt sales is misguided and incorrect. That said, the structure of shirt sales licensing agreements is evolving, and clubs are leveraging their scale and brand to secure more lucrative deals. A great example of this is Liverpool. They chose to leave aside New Balance as their shirt sponsor in favour of Nike in 2020. But why did they do that? Well, quite simply put, the deal was significantly more lucrative. Under the agreement with New Balance, Liverpool received an upfront fixed payment of £45 million each season and a small variable commission on each shirt sold beyond the one millionth shirt each season. However, Liverpool would sell only marginally more than a million shirts each season, and this effectively meant that their season windfall was about £45 million, which is just the fixed upfront payment. Under the proposed new agreement with Nike, the upfront fixed payment is actually significantly lower at £30 million per season. But the catch is the variable commission is 20% on all shirts sold starting from the very first shirt. So hypothetically, if a Liverpool shirt retailed at £50 and Liverpool sold a million, they would pocket £10 million additionally each season. Now, this still wouldn't make up the £15 million per season delta that existed versus the New Balance deal, so why would Liverpool do this? Well, actually, the club were betting on their ability and Nike's global marketing and distribution prowess to sell significantly more shirts. And it's actually paid off rather dramatically. Liverpool had sold 2.2 million shirts globally by September of 2022. Annualising that would mean close to 2.9 million shirts sold in the full year. Applying the same maths of a £50 retail price and a 20% cut, Liverpool would now pocket close to £30 million through shirt sales over and above the £30 million fixed upfront payment. That means £60 million a year, which is 33% higher than the payout with the New Balance deal. So what's in this for Nike? Well, simply put, they win a manufacturing deal with a highly attractive global sporting brand and keep 80% of the revenue on all shirts sold with a relatively small upfront fixed payment each year. Nike too was betting on its ability to significantly accelerate shirt sales for Liverpool and capitalise on that growth in the global fan base. And in many ways, the timing was also crucial for the club. They lifted the Premier League in 2020 just before the deal began and the Champions League the year before. That timing was ripe for a push to accelerate the growth of the global fan base and capitalise on the monetization opportunity that came with it. 
You see, clubs are increasingly realizing the value of building and harnessing a global brand. And we can expect shirt sponsorship deals in the future to follow a similar structure to what's transpired between Liverpool and Nike. So, can football clubs pay for transfers through shirt sales? Certainly not. But the money that they can make from shirt sales is likely to increase significantly in the years to come. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.